Well, good afternoon, CBC Olderton and guests. It's Pastor Gary. You might be surprised to find me here in the library, the children's library section especially. Uh, but I'm filling in for uh, Mr. Luke today. He's not feeling well, so perhaps, kids, you can pray with your parents uh, for Mr. Burrow, and we trust that he'll be feeling better. And back in this slot, reading you a Bible story uh, next Thursday, I am going to pick up where Luke has left off. I think he finished a book last week. I don't know if he promised you what he was going to read, but I understand that he was going to start a new book with you. I'll show it to you. Can you see? That's the Jesus Storybook Bible. And this is a really wonderful Bible. Children, I'm going to speak to your parents first, and you can listen in, and then we'll tell a couple of stories, and they can listen in uh, while you're hearing the stories. How's that? Uh, so for the parents, uh, this is a great uh, gift idea, uh, grandparents as well. Uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible is really, really well illustrated, but what I like about it uh, most is that it is not like some children's Bible stories in that it's uh, a bunch of individual stories. Uh, this one is really written with a, a really good theology of Jesus uh, behind it, and so uh, the writer of this is Sally Lloyd-Jones, not at all related to Martin Lloyd-Jones. Uh, and Sally's intention was to write uh, the Bible in an accessible way for pre-readers, and she had her own children and her nieces and nephews in mind when she did it. And she really didn't want to write this like the way, uh, like I said, a lot of children's Bible stories are written, where it seems to focus on these big amazing stories with big heroes in it and the message of this of the story seems to be you can be like these heroes she wanted to write this with the idea that there's one hero in the story of scripture and and the bible is a is a unified story it's not a bunch of individual stories put together in a book it's actually one story about one character this baby that came to earth called Jesus was this this great promise that was given to God's people and it's what God's people now look back to as well we look to Christ also and so uh, it is a, a book I highly commend if you don't have one uh, sitting on your shelf at home I encourage you to get it uh, books for Christ is a great resource uh, booksforchrist.com it's Canadian based so if you've ever tried to order a Christian book and and you get to that point online where you realize that you're gonna to have to pay $15 US just to get it over the border please look into booksforchrist.com it's based in southern Ontario for modest uh, order amounts they'll send it to you for free and it supports a Canadian Christian business well without further ado let's get to our story reading we're gonna start of course right at the beginning and I know Luke likes to show you the book as he reads and I'm going to try to do that Pastor Gary hasn't done this for a while so please be patient with me I'm gonna to try to do this by reading two books at the same time how's that I'll show you one and I'll read the other one So here we go And this is an introduction to the story we call the Bible. Can you see this? Try to get that level. Okay. The heavens are singing about how great God is. And the skies are shouting it out. See what God has made. Day after day, night after night, they are speaking to us. God wrote, I love you. He wrote it in the sky, on the earth, and under the sea. He wrote his message everywhere because God created everything in his world to reflect him like a mirror, to show us what he is like, to help us know him, to make our hearts sing. 
the way a kitten chases her tail, the way red poppies grow wild, the way a dolphin swims. And God put it into words, too, and wrote it in a book called the Bible. There you go. Now, some people think the Bible is a book of rules telling you what you should and shouldn't do. The Bible certainly does have some rules in it. They show you how life works best. But the Bible isn't mainly about you and what you should be doing. It's about God, what he has done. Other people think the Bible is a book of heroes showing you people you should copy. The Bible does have some heroes in it. Some of these you can see here. We've got Noah and Moses and David and Leah, Daniel. Can you see Mary and Peter and Joseph, Abraham and Saul? And that Joseph isn't Mary's Joseph. It's the Old Testament Joseph. See, he's got a very colorful coat on. That's Joseph from the Old Testament. The Bible does have heroes in it, but as you'll soon find out, most of the people in the Bible aren't heroes at all. They make some really big mistakes. They get afraid, just like you and me. Sometimes they run away, just like you and me. And sometimes, like you and me, they are downright mean. No, the Bible isn't a book of rules or a book of heroes. The Bible is most of all a story. It's an adventure story about a young hero who comes from a far country to win back his lost treasure. It's a love story about a brave prince who leaves his palace, his throne, everything to rescue the one he loves. It's like the most wonderful fairy tales but this has actually come true in real life. You see, the best thing about this story is it's true. There are lots of stories in the Bible, but all the stories are telling one big story, the story of how God loves his children and comes to rescue them. It takes the whole Bible to tell this story, and at the center of the story, there's a baby. Every story in the Bible whispers his name. He's like the missing piece of a puzzle, the piece that makes all the other pieces fit together. And suddenly you can see a beautiful picture. And this is no ordinary baby. This is the child upon whom everything would depend. This is the child who one day... But wait! Our story starts where all good stories start right at the very beginning. <laughs> there we go. The beginning. A perfect home. In the beginning, there was nothing, nothing to hear, nothing to feel, nothing to see. Only emptiness and darkness <clears throat> God said though fill it up I'll take this emptiness and out of the darkness I'm going to make light and out of nothing I'm going to make everything like a mummy bird flutters her wings over her eggs to help her babies hatch God hovered over the deep silent darkness he was making life happen. And God spoke. That's all. And whatever he said, it happened. <laughs> God said, hello, light. And light shone into the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. You're good, God said, and they were. 
And God said, hello sea, hello sky. And a great space opened up, wide and deep and high. You're good, God said. And they were. Then God said, hello land. And there, splashing up through the oceans, some cliffs, mountains, sandy beaches. You're good, God said. And they were. Hello trees, God said. Hello grass and flowers. And everything, everywhere, burst into life. He made buds bud and shoots shoot, flowers flower. You're good, God said. And they were. Look at this picture. Wow. Hello stars, God said. Hello sun. Hello moon. And whizzing into the darkness came fiery globes spinning around and around, whirling orange and purple and golden planets. You're good, God said. And they were. Hello birds, God said, and with fluttering and flapping and chirping and singing, birds filled the skies. Hello fish, God said, and with a darting and dashing and wriggling and splashing, fish spilled the seas. You're good, God said, and they were. Then God said, hello animals, and everyone came out to play. The earth was filled with noisy noises, growling and gobbling and snapping and snorting and happy, scurfluffling. You're good, God said, and they were. God saw all that he made, and he loved them, and they were lovely because he loved them. But God saved the best for last. From the beginning, God had a shining dream in his heart. He would make people to share his forever happiness. They would be his children, and the world would be their perfect home. So God breathed life into Adam and Eve. When they opened their eyes, the first thing they ever saw was God's face. And when God saw that he was like a new dad, when he, God saw them, he was like a new dad. You look like me, he said. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever made. God loved them with all his heart. And they were lovely because he loved them. And Adam and Eve joined in the song of the stars and the streams and the wind and the trees the wonderful song of love to the one who made them. Their hearts were filled with happiness and nothing ever made them sad or lonely or sick or afraid. God looked at everything he had made. Perfect, he said, and it was. But all the stars and the mountains and the oceans and the galaxies and everything were nothing compared to how much God loved his children. He would move heaven and earth to be near them. Always, whatever happened, whatever it cost him, he would always love them. And so it was that that wonderful love story began. The Terrible Lie Adam and Eve lived happily together in their beautiful new home, and everything was perfect for a while, until the day when everything went wrong. God had a horrible enemy. His name was Satan. Satan had once been the most beautiful angel, 
but he didn't want to be just an angel. He wanted to be God. He grew proud and evil and full of hate. And God had to send him out of heaven. Satan was seething with anger and looking for a way to hurt God. He wanted to stop God's plan, stop this love story right there. So he disguised himself as a snake and waited in the garden. Now God had given Adam and Eve only one rule. Don't eat the fruit on that tree, God told them, because if you'll do, you'll think you know everything. You'll stop trusting me. And then death and sadness and tears will come. You see, God knew that if they ate the fruit, they would think they didn't need him, and they would try to make themselves happy without him. But God knew there was no such thing as happiness without him, and life without him wouldn't be life at all. As soon as the snake saw his chance, he slithered silently up to Eve. Does God really love you? the serpent whispered. If he does, why won't he let you eat the nice, juicy, delicious fruit? Poor you. Perhaps God doesn't want you to be happy. The snake's words hissed into her ears and sunk deep into her heart like poison. Does God love me? Eve wondered. Suddenly, she didn't know anymore. Just trust me, the serpent whispered. You, you don't need God. One small taste, that's all, and you'll be happier than you could ever dream. Eve picked the fruit and ate some, and Adam ate some too, and a terrible lie came into the world. It would live on in every human heart, whispering to every one of God's children, God doesn't love me. And it wasn't a dream. It was a nightmare. A dove flew from Adam's hand. A deer darted in a thicket. It was as if they were frightened by something. A chill was in the air. Something strange was happening. They had always been naked, but now they felt naked and wrong, and they didn't want anyone to see them. So they hid. Later that evening, as God was taking his walk, he called to them, Children! Usually Adam and Eve loved to hear God's voice and would run to him, but this time they ran away from him and hid in the shadows. Where are you, God called. Hiding, Adam said. We're afraid of you. Did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? Adam said, Eve made me do it. What have you done, God asked. Eve said, The serpent made me do it. A terrible pain came into God's heart. His children hadn't just broken the one rule. They had broken God's heart. They had broken their wonderful relationship with him. And now he knew everything else would break. God's creation would start to unravel and come undone and go wrong. From now on, everything would die, even though it was all supposed to last forever. You see, sin had come into God's perfect world, and it would never leave. God's children would always be running away from him and hiding in the dark. Their hearts would break now and never work properly again. God wouldn't and couldn't let his children live forever, not in such pain, not without him. There was only one way to protect them. You will have to leave the garden now, God told his children his eyes filling with tears. There is no longer, this is no longer your true home. It's not the place for you anymore. But before they left the garden, God made clothes for his children to cover them. He gently clothed them, and then he sent them on a long, long journey out of the garden, out of their home. Well, in another story, 
it would all be over, and that would have been the end. But this is not the end in this story. God loved his children too much to let the story end there. Even though he knew he would suffer, God had a plan, a magnificent dream. One day he would get his children back. One day he would make the world their perfect home again. And one day he would wipe away every tear from their eyes. You see, no matter what, in spite of everything, God would love his children with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And though they would not and though they would forget him and run from him, deep in their hearts, God's children would miss him always and long for him. Lost children yearning for their home. Before they left the garden, God whispered a promise to Adam and Eve. It will not always be so. It will come to rescue you. I will come to rescue you. And when I do, I'm going to do battle against that snake. I'll get rid of the sin and the dark and the sadness you let in here. I'm coming back for you. And he would. One day, God himself would come. Well, that's our reading for today. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, Remember, parents, this is a very easy book to to find online uh, in local stores as well. Uh, It's called the Jesus Storybook Bible. And I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, Look for uh, Mr. Luke to come back next Thursday and continue reading from that where we'll pick up the story and we'll find out a little bit more about God's rescue plan. You know, kids... Uh, We all make mistakes. Sometimes even your parents make mistakes, don't they? But God has made a plan for us. He doesn't. He never stops loving us, even when we do make mistakes. And God has made a way to make those mistakes right again. And we're going to learn about that as we go through this storybook. Again, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you uh, tune in tomorrow for our roundtable table talk with Pastor Andrew and myself. And in the meantime, have a great day. God bless you.